from the rapid transmission of COVID-19. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent. We continue our Lenten journey, albeit in another way, through our disciplines of prayer, fasting, the giving of alms, and the reading and reflecting upon the Word of God. Please remember that even though our building is closed for public worship, we are here for you. God calls us to support one another, to minister to the needs of our community, and to reach out to the sick, the lonely, and those who are struggling. Please know that we are here for you. If you need someone to talk to, assistance in getting groceries, or need a visit, please call either the Reverend Michelle or myself, and we would be glad to connect with you. Weekly collections of food, personal care items, and financial support in order to fulfill the mission that God has given us are still needed, now more than ever. We are around during the week, and you can drop off your offering or even mail it in. We are grateful for those who contribute through pre-authorized giving, and now we have a new option through Canada Helps, which will be available shortly, and which will have clear instructions for clicking through on our website. What a joy it is to gather today, to gather with you for worship, worshiping our ever-merciful, ever-present, ever-living God, who promises to abide with us even through all of life's ups and downs, through this pandemic and beyond, even to the end of the age. I invite you, therefore, if you haven't already, to click on or download the worship resource and come along with us as we worship the Lord together. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. And we pray together the collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Christ our Lord. Amen. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts, and let them return to the Lord, and he will have compassion to our God, for he will richly pardon. Dear friends, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Together we pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now is the time for our children's focus, our children's time. So if your kids aren't with you, put your computer or your smart TV on pause and call them down to worship with you. Good morning. Good morning. So today I've invited some of my stuffy friends, the church sheep and church bear, to join me. And for the children's focus. So I have a question. Have you ever found yourself in a dark place? Maybe you've woken up in the middle of the night and it's dark. 
Or how about camping? Have you ever been camping when it's really dark at night, can't see anything? Or maybe the power's gone out and you can't see your way around the house. Well, how do you feel when you're in that dark? Are you afraid, scared, anxious, can't find your way around? Well, when that happens, sometimes we can use things like a nightlight to find our way to the bathroom, or we can use a flashlight to find our way around the campsite, or maybe, and even better, we can use a candle to find our way around the house. And when we see this light, and we have these lights, well, how do we feel then? We feel maybe a little bit calmer, a little bit happier. We have a sense of direction around the house. And we just feel better. Today, in our gospel, we're going to hear a story about a man who met Jesus. And he was blind, and he hadn't seen from birth, so he had never seen the smiles on his friends' faces when they were happy. He'd never seen the birds that were singing. He'd heard them, but he'd never seen them. And when he met up with Jesus, Jesus went and he bent down and he took some earth and he spat in it. And he made a paste in his hands and then he put it on the man's eyes. And then he told that man to go and wash in a pool. And after that happened, the man got his sight back. He was able to see the faces of his loved ones. He was able to see the birds. And he told everyone about the greatness of Jesus and what he had done. Well, today, we too are loved. We are the light of Christ, and what we can do with that light is to show kindness and caring, generosity, and most importantly, we can share that light with others that are in darkness. Let's pray. Dearest Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for being the light, the light in our heart, in our lives, and the light that we can share over and over and over again with those around us so that they can see the path to you. Amen.
Oh, Lord, yes. Is- 
his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The When he had said this, he spat on the ground 
and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In case you are standing at home, please be seated, or please put your feet up. My friends, these are trying times. These are anxious times. And as much as we are trying to stay positive, it's very challenging, I know. And it may get a little more challenging before we're through. And I'm wondering if you, like me, are finding it difficult to concentrate, to stay on task. Perhaps you have a shorter fuse than normal. These are all normal signs of stress. So for the next few minutes, I'd like you just to take the time to sit back, to close your eyes, perhaps. Take a few deep breaths. I'm going to take you on a journey. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to take you on a journey back in time. So I'd like you to imagine yourself in Jesus' time, in Jerusalem. Imagine yourself walking on a path just outside the city. Imagine what you'd be wearing. Imagine perhaps the heat of the sun. And you're on a path, and up ahead you see a man. So I'd like you, there's a tree right there, and I'd like you to stop and just sit down under that tree in the shade and just observe this story of this man as it unfolds. Now to the passerby, this man appears as quiet, passive, 
relatively harmless. But to his neighbors and his family, to anyone who has spent even a few minutes with him, they knew him to be a grisly kind of fellow, prone to foul language, prone to steal from you if he's given the opportunity, always criticizing, quick with negative, depressing opinions about everything. And all of this kept him pretty isolated from the community in which he lived. Oh, there's something else that kept him isolated from the community in which he lived. He was blind. And he was blind from birth. And the way of being for him, this attitude towards life, was fashioned. Was fashioned from when he was a tiny baby. Born blind, he was considered unclean, and therefore someone to be avoided, because perhaps it was believed in those times that perhaps to include him in your midst was to risk contamination and becoming unclean yourself. A source of shame for his family. His father at birth had asked the priests of the synagogue, what sin have I committed to be cursed by God in such a way? Now our blind man, he did have a community of his own, a rough band of misshapen, blind, seizuring, poverty-stricken folk that looked out for one another. And they would gather often at a local pool just outside the city gates to bathe and share their stories of hardship. But apart from these occasions of fellowship, days of isolation and hardship for our blind man rolled out like all the days before them. He had his own spot right under that tree on a path towards a local market. And today was like any other, except on this day, our man had heard rumblings that morning, murmurings, rumors about a certain rabbi, a certain holy man who promises salvation from poverty, from illness, salvation from the social calamity the occupied people of Israel find themselves in. Rumors of healing. And that this man has perhaps come to save all of those who are oppressed. And well, just to make life kind of better. All of this, our man scoffed at. So as not to get his hopes roused. He'd learned long ago not to let that happen. And can you see from the other direction, in the distance, a throng of people coming your way, walking right past you, the clouds of dust, as this crowd of people approach the tree where this man sat. Our man did not stand up. He didn't even attempt to sit up straight. He didn't attempt to straighten or adjust his clothing. After all, a filthy smelly rag is a filthy smelly rag, no matter how you wear it. He did place his cup a little further forward than usual with the thought that perhaps if this crowd, if this rabbi perhaps was in this crowd, and who's so wonderful, the most he could hope for was that he would be rather generous, rather sorry, rather generous with his coins. And he hears the crowd approaching and lots of conversation going on, and he smells and feels the dust from all the sandals. And then he senses the crowd gathering around him. And he grumbles his usual tagline, 
money for the blind, bread for the poor. God has sent you on this path. God bless you for stopping. He discovered a few years back that adding the God bit created a little more generosity in the crowd. And then he hears the conversation. And he's reminded of his shame. There's that word again, sin. Sin, sin, sin and me, me and sin. In his bitterness, he thinks to himself, that should be a new tagline. Hashtag, save you from your own sin. Give this sinner some bread. Another beggar who has traveled with the crowd crouches down beside him and whispers, this is the one they call Messiah, the one who has been doing miracles in these parts. And our man is surprised to notice that his own heart begins to flutter. And he's even more surprised to find himself whispering a prayer. And then he hears the voice, a voice that commands attention, not loud, not soft. He can't even tell whether it's a kind voice or not. And he doesn't really understand what the man is saying. It's something about night coming. What? Does that mean the man's going to hurry on by? The man says, I'm the light of the world. <laughs> Light. Don't even know what that really means. Light and dark. They're just shadows behind my eyes. But he does distinctly hear this rabbi man say the word life. The work of God in his life. Work of God. Perhaps there will be some more money in it for me after all, he thinks. And he lifts up his cup towards the voice. Now our blind man's hearing is really good. And he can tell if a man walking by is rich or poor by the noise his sandals make in the dust. And he can tell, he can tell when someone spits. Because lots of people have spat at him over the years. This holy man is spitting. He's spitting, but not at him. In the hush, he senses this man stooping in front of him. He hears and feels the, gent the gentle swoosh of the rabbi's tunic. And then he feels the touch of the man's hand on his shoulder. And then the most strangest thing, he feels wet mud on his eyelids. And it was not a gentle press of mud into his eyes. It was a firm press and the mud and the wet dripped down onto his cheeks. Is this man mocking me, he thought? Can things get much worse than this? His immediate thought is to yell and lash out. If it weren't for a strange warmth he feels in his chest and that crazy fluttering of his heart. And then, there was the rabbi's equally strange and unexpected words. Go wash. Well, it's, it's just really not what he expected. It's not at all what he imagined from a holy rabbi. Whenever he'd allow his mind dream of any kind of healing, it wasn't about mud and washing in the pool of Siloam. Go and wash. What's so special about that? He does that often. 
It's the place he and his community always gather. It's the only place they are allowed to congregate. Yeah. So the blind man stands up, and with as much dignity as he can muster, he walks up. He knows the way by heart. And his community greet him with the usual mix of warmth and misery known to them alone. And laughing and swearing, he lowers himself into the pool. Laughing and swearing, he tells a story of what just happened to him. As he's washing the mud and the spittle off of his eyes and his cheeks. And then the bitter tone in his laughter turns to wonder and amazement and joy and humility and the warmth in his chest is now pounding and he's still swearing he's still swearing and laughing laughing with joy as he tries to tell the story and his, com his companions are a blur amidst all of his tears My friends, my dear friends, we are well into our Lenten journey. And what started as perhaps a lighthearted, well, perhaps I'll give up chocolate and wine, or perhaps I'll spend uh, 10 more minutes in prayer than usual every day. This Lent is turning into a full-on Ministry of Public Health-led, God-infused Lent. A Lent in which we are given the opportunity to experience firsthand just a few of the feelings of our blind man. Just a few of the feelings of social isolation and vulnerability which the poor and the marginalized in our city of Brampton and cities and villages in countries around the globe have been experiencing long before the words COVID-19 and social distancing appeared on the scene. And perhaps we were blind to all of this before. Or perhaps before this Lent, we didn't quite see clearly enough the disparity between what it's like to live with a sense of power and self-agency and to be completely vulnerable and powerless. Perhaps, like our blind man, we only saw in shadows. This Lent, God is making use of the mud spit which we find ourselves faced with. He's using the most unconventional, strange opportunity. God is sending us to enter into a time of stillness and to face our vulnerability. God is calling his children around the globe to turn to him and to open hardened hearts. The blind man had a choice. It was up to him. He could have fought against, against Jesus' overture. He could have lashed out. He could have just ran away. Responding to the signals from that part of the brain that is very old and very primitive, but he chose to look with an inward gaze, to receive in faith, even if it was just a tiny bit of faith, the task set before him. My friends, God is with us. And I believe that God is offering healing to us in very disquiet, disquieting ways. 
as our lives are so incredibly disrupted, and in a world that values business and busyness and productivity and success, we are getting mud and spit in our eyes. We are being sent into our homes. We are being called to wash. I have to say it. We're being called to wash a lot. God is inviting us to slow down and spend time with those whom we love the most and also with those who can drive us crazy the most, our families and ourselves. It is hard, very hard. I ask you to be patient with one another especially with yourself. And I'm also asking you to watch for the healing presence of God in your midst. Remember, your healing may be presented to you in very strange ways, and at first it may be completely unrecognizable. But watch. Watch and listen. And I also encourage you, you may want to, when you see those moments of healing and the sense of God's presence in the midst of it all, you may want to email us with those stories. Those stories of how you witness God at work. Those stories of healing. Healing for you and your loved ones, your neighbors and your friends. Us to pray. I found this prayer the other day. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, what you ask us to bear at times we find hard to understand. Sometimes we feel angry and confused and scared. When your care and purpose seem distant, and we fear that in our faith we have been deceived. Yet we believe that you are still our Heavenly Father, and we long to know that your love has not lost control. Strengthen our faith and assure us of your gracious compassion. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Confess our faith now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Wisdom, with a wonderful wisdom 
that seeks to understand and fulfill the needs of the people so that your children are not left wanting for food, shelter, and not left to sit in fear of financial concern or for their futures. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Creator, place your hand on the shoulders of our bishops, Andrew and Jenny. Remind them of the fruits of the Holy Spirit which have, through grace, been gifted to them. May they use these gifts to lead us in these uncertain times and bind us in unity under your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Creator, Although we feel as if we walk in darkness, help us to remember that through Christ we are light and that we are called to share that light with those around us in creative ways to ensure that our neighbors, friends, families, and even strangers know that they are not alone and very much loved by you and by all of us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Creator, we ask you to especially bless all those who work in the medical field, frontline workers, doctors, nurses, porters, for those who are part of the COVID-19 testing facilities, for those spending hours talking, taking phone calls and answering questions from those in deep concern. We ask that you bless these workers and let them know how grateful the world is for the gift that you have given them to do their work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> Loving Creator, we pray for the sick. May your Holy Spirit come upon them and provide them comfort, relief from pain, spiritual rest, and a hope that only you can provide. We pray for an end to the spread of the COVID-19 virus, and an end to all of this, and in the meantime, the strength and wisdom to cope. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving Creator, we pray for those who have died. We pray for their loved ones who are seeking to understand and work through the grief and mourning. We pray for those who have died in the battle against the COVID-19 virus. We ask that you swiftly take them into your bosom with the knowledge that they have sacrificed their lives to save ours. Remind all of us, as we need, of the beautiful hope of being reunited with our loved ones in the resurrection of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we present these prayers to you. The needs of the Church, the needs of the world, the needs of your children. We look to you with eyes lifted and arms raised for a great comfort and a holy embrace. We seek to be reminded that we are not alone and that all things will be made right. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me have the light of life. My sisters, my brothers in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. And our offertory hymn.
Let us pray. Giver of life, your Son has destroyed the power of death for all those who believe in him. Accept all we offer you this day and strengthen us in faith and hope. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service where we are, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. And now may the God of hope transform you through the power of his grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love and serve this day and always. Amen. Amen.